All right, what's up guys? I am back. You may notice that I am now in a new apartment and that is part of the reason why I have not been posting a ton of videos is I have been moving, but now I'm back. And so today we're gonna to be talking about SHR or Synology Hybrid RAID and how it compares to something like RAID 5 or RAID 1. All right, so first off, what is RAID? RAID stands for Redundant Array of Inexpensive Disks. Basically, it's combining a bunch of disks together to make them into one larger, faster disk. And so there are actually a lot of different ways that you can do this. There's RAID 1, RAID 0, RAID 5, RAID 6, and RAID 10. And those are really the most common RAID types you're going to be seeing. In this video, we're going to be primarily just talking about RAID 5 and RAID 1. So one of the biggest reasons to use RAID is what's called disk fault tolerance. In every single RAID type that I just described, other than RAID 0, you can lose an entire disk due to something like a mechanical failure, and the entire pool will still operate and you will have no data loss. This is great for both uptime and protection, because the more disks you introduce, the more risk you're taking on, because if one disk fails in a RAID 0 array, all of your data would be lost. However, if that was in a RAID 5 array, you would not be losing any data unless a second disk failed. There is, however, a catch with these RAID groups. Because you can lose X number of disks with these RAID groups, it also means that you have X number of disks left of storage. So for example, RAID 5 has one disk of redundancy. That means your storage pool will be one disk less the total size. For RAID 6, it's two disks of redundancy. So you will lose two disks of storage space. There is, however, one catch, and this is where Synology's SHR comes in really strong. Basically, in RAID, the RAID group pretends like every single disk is the size of the smallest disk. So if you were to have four four terabyte drives and four six terabyte drives, it would act as if all the drives in the pool were just four terabyte drives, and all those six terabyte drives would have two terabytes that were never used. This is because all the disks have to be the exact same size for the parity math to work. So where this really hurts your wallet is if you want to upgrade, you have to upgrade your entire storage pool all at the same time. Otherwise, you're not gonna get any size advantages. So say you had a NAS with four four terabyte drives and a RAID 5 array. You would lose one disk to redundancy, so you basically have 12 terabytes of storage. Say you want to upgrade to 16 terabytes of storage. Well, you can't just pop in an extra two eight terabyte drives and have it work. Instead, you would have to put in all new drives to see storage increases. And so another reason why SHR is great is it really just simplifies things for people who don't know a ton about RAID types. There are two different types of Synology's hybrid RAID, SHR1 and SHR2. They're very simple to understand. SHR1 provides you one disk of fault tolerance. SHR2 provides you two disks of fault tolerance. And then Synology behind the scenes handles all of the storage for you. If you upgrade from two disks to three disks, Synology will just convert it by itself without you ever having to do anything. It makes it really easy for people who don't want to spend the time to try to figure all of these things out. The other big advantage that Synology Hybrid RAID has over a regular RAID is it allows you to mix and match disks of different sizes. And it handles it all by itself and gives you the maximum possible amount of storage while still performing the full fault tolerance of whatever level you're at. And so say you have the same situation as my example earlier, where you have the four four terabyte drives and the four six terabyte drives, Synology Hybrid RAID would actually take care of that for you. It would actually give you increased capacity by using those two extra terabytes on all of those six terabyte disks to give you additional space. So it's very valuable in that sense. All right, so to show how all of this works and the fact that I don't have an animator, I'm gonna be doing this in Excel, basically showing how RAID 5 
and SHR differ. Both of them will provide you with one disk fault tolerance, but the RAID 5 is not going to allow you to mix and match disks. All right, and so as you can see here, we've got two setups, one with Synology Hybrid RAID 1 and one with RAID 5. And both of them have the exact same disks in them. Two six terabyte drives, one eight terabyte drive, two 12 terabyte drives, and a 16 terabyte drive. They also both give you one disk of fault tolerance, meaning you can lose an entire disk and still retain all of your data. All right, and so now we're actually gonna go through and basically show how SHR and RAID create arrays and disks. And so both of these have the exact same first step. First, locate the smallest disk in the pool. And for both of these, it is that six terabyte drive. Then the next step, is to pull out six terabytes from all of the disks and make it into a redundant array. So we're gonna do that. And so now for both of them, you subtract out one disk because that is the one that is gonna be used for that redundant data. Really it's mixed in, but you're still losing one disk of data. So this orange one is basically that parity data that we've gotta give up for storage space. And then the rest of them, are how much we actually get. All right, and so now we have 30 total terabytes, but there's still a lot of wasted disk. So we're gonna do the next one is the remaining data. All right, and so now, as we can see here, we've still got a lot of remaining data that we can use, but RAID 5 can't do anything about it that data is just useless. And so what SHR does that RAID 5 does not is it actually partitions off the disks. And so what it does in this case, since six terabytes was the smallest disk, is it goes through and partitions off six terabytes from all the disks. And now for the remaining partitions, we can see in that eight terabyte disk, we've got a two terabyte partition that can basically act as a whole new disk and you can further perform a RAID on it. All SHR is, is really just using RAIDs multiple times on the same disks. And it does it all automatically for you and so it's really easy to use. And so now with SHR, we get to have a group two. And we're gonna do the exact same thing that we did earlier on it. We're gonna find the smallest disk in the group which in this case is that two terabyte disk and bring it down. And now we're going to once again use that as fault tolerance. So that one's once to get lost, but we get an extra six terabytes. And so now we've got an extra six terabytes of data. But as we can see here, there's still some remaining data. So let's do the same thing again. All right, and so now once again, we're going to get partitions off of these disks. So we do the same thing we've been doing. Find the smallest disk and bring it out. Take one of them and make it a parity and get the data from them. And so as we can see here, we're done because once you have just one disk left, there's nothing to do because you will lose all your data if you lost any data stored on there. And so we have changed from having 30 terabytes of usable data all the way up to 44 terabytes of usable data because it keeps doing RAID groups on themselves. All right, and so here, this is how you can see how to calculate the amount of usable storage you've got with an SHR array. So if we add up the used parity bits for all of these, we've got six terabytes, two terabytes, four terabytes, and four terabytes. That adds up to 16 terabytes, which is the size of the largest disk in the group. And so when you're calculating the usable storage on an SHR1 array, simply add up all the storage across all the drives and subtract out the storage of the largest drive. When you're trying to do the same thing on a RAID 5 array, simply find the smallest disk in the group and multiply that by the number of disks you've got 
minus one. And so in this case, we've got six disks. Six minus one is five. So six times five is 30 terabytes. And that's how you can calculate the sizes of these arrays very easily. Synology also has a calculator on their website that'll link, that'll show you how to make these calculations as well. All right, so Synology Hybrid Rate is awesome, right? Well, there is just one catch, and that really boils down to the performance. So one of the other reasons why you wanna use a RAID is because the more disks you have, the faster your performance will be. Basically, the reason you get such better performance out of it is instead of writing to one drive at a time, you get to be reading and writing from five different drives all at the same time. That means you're gonna have five times the read speeds and five times the write speeds. Ideally, there is some overhead, but that's what you should be getting. However, with SHR, you get a bunch of different of these RAID groups, right? And so say you have a file stored on group three. You're going to be reading and writing from two disks at once because this one is used for parity. And if you have a file stored on group one, you're gonna be reading and writing from five different disks because that's what the array is. And so this is why SHR is not offered on a lot of those enterprise NASAs because they want the highest performance. You don't wanna have a circumstance where just because one file happens to be saved in a different place, you could get two and a half times worse performance out of it. For enterprise people, they want all their files to operate exactly the same and not cause any issues. And so really that is the biggest downside of SHR. But for home users, most of you will not see it. That's because even with just two disks in a RAID 1 configuration, that is enough to saturate a gigabit connection. And so for most users, the only way you'll ever see it is either using link aggregation to get multiple gigabit connections all at the same time, or by having a 10 gigabit card. And so, unless you're doing that, you will never see a speed difference between SHR and RAID 5, but SHR will save you a ton of money if you just wanna upgrade your pool bit by bit by adding in drives. This is why SHR is just awesome for home use. It allows you to slowly upgrade over time. If you've got five four terabyte drives in a SHR one configuration, you're going to have about 16 terabytes usable. Synology takes a little bit off the top so your disks don't get completely full, but you're gonna have 16 terabytes. If you wanna get an extra four terabytes usable, you can buy just two eight terabyte drives and throw those in and you will get an extra four terabytes usable. The one thing to remember is you always subtract out the largest disk in the group. And so if you only have one disk of that size, it's not gonna be useful. You need to have two disks of the largest size to begin seeing increases by that size. All right, so I hope this explained what SHR is and how it works. Go ahead and leave any comments or questions in the comments below and have a good one. Bye.